When it comes to E3, we've all had those experiences where a trailer drops for a game franchise that you really love and all the little hairs on the back of your neck stand up and just the hype is uncontrollable. You're so excited. You absolutely can't believe what you're seeing. And of course, with the highest anticipation for Halo Infinite being showcased at E3 and we would finally get a new look at this game for the first time in pretty much a year, the Halo fan base's hype train has been completely off the charts, so when E3 finally did come and the Xbox Showcase for 2021 arrived, Luke and I both didn't really have those feelings of immense, overwhelming excitement like we had maybe anticipated considering how big of Halo fans we are. And when we look to the rest of the Halo community, it, it didn't seem like we were the only ones feeling this way after the event. After a year of virtually nothing from Halo other than speculation, this event of course is a time where Microsoft had a chance to squash a lot of the fears and concerns that the fan base had. But after this event, it seems like fans had maybe more questions than before, with not a whole lot of answers to the pre existing questions that the rest of the fan base has had. Halo is the biggest and most anticipated game for Xbox, so not only were we surprised to see its section of the conference being put in the middle of the entire event, but after you cut out the generic talking and introduction before the actual gameplay reveal, we pretty much only got four minutes out of the entire 90 minute conference dedicated to Halo Infinite. And before we even look into what was fully shown off, we had talked beforehand about what we expected from the Xbox presentation and considering this was a 90 minute presentation, we were thinking we were going to be seeing some massive Halo Infinite stuff somewhere ranging from at least 20 to 30 minutes of Halo Infinite information considering last time we got a reveal it was about 10 to 15 minutes. And since this is supposed to be bigger and more exciting than ever before, we were expecting quite a bit. But instead, we got like a seven and a half minute block with a little bit of talking and then a little section showing off part of the Halo Infinite story through a cutscene. I mean, it could have been a quick time event, but we're pretty sure it was a cutscene. And then right after that, we got a two minute trailer for Halo Infinite's multiplayer, being the first time we've actually gotten a first look at the Halo Infinite multiplayer. And this thing had a ton of fast paced editing, a lot of new features and gadgets and weapons were shown off. But yeah, it was definitely a very condensed thing. But I think this is where a lot of the biggest criticisms come from what they showed off at E3, with the fact that with the first look of Halo Infinite's multiplayer being so fast paced in the fashion that it was, there's no way of getting a fair idea of what the game will actually feel like. A lot of people on things like Twitter talked about this as well. And I think after watching this trailer, I don't think anyone is explicitly trying to make a claim as to how Halo Infinite's multiplayer is going to be, whether saying it's great or bad. It just seems like after you watch the trailer, if this is all we get for Halo Infinite, a lot of players are kind of just left feeling unsure as to how they should feel about the game. Personally, I don't feel like this trailer does a good job at representing what the gameplay will feel like, whether that's for better or for worse. Now still, despite the criticisms, when it comes to the story perspective, it still looks like the story is going to be pretty strong. Narratively speaking, every Everything we've seen from day one of Halo Infinite's reveal has had us fully captivated with every moment and every interaction that we've seen that has been shown off. We wish we've been able to see more, but nonetheless, it's still really cool every time we just get that little snippet or that little sneak peek into what's going on in the narrative with Halo. There wasn't anything we saw where we're like, Halo is over. This is the end. The multiplayer is dead on arrival. We just felt like we couldn't get a fair and accurate vibe for what the multiplayer is going to play like. Is this gonna play like Halo 3 or is it gonna play like Halo 5 Guardians? You could watch this trailer and still have absolutely no idea what the game is going to feel like. And after the trailer and the whole Halo segment was finished with E3, the more we thought about it, the more we felt like things maybe should have been done a little bit differently, especially towards the end of the E3 conference when they were giving the same amount of time to Forza Horizon 5, which is a game franchise that we're we're not like the biggest fans of, but the style that was used to present that game was significantly better than Halo Infinite's because at the end of the little segment on Forza Horizon 5, we at least felt like we knew what the game was about and what we could expect from the gameplay and some of the features along the way. And doing that type of narrated overview of the game is 
definitely an approach that maybe should have been done with Halo Infinite. But then the even bigger question that we still don't fully understand is that on Halo's YouTube channel, there's a multiplayer event scheduled for the next day after this Halo Infinite multiplayer reveal thing that maybe will go more in depth into some of the things we saw in multiplayer and explain what we actually saw, which is great, but why didn't they announce that at the E3 event? Because if anything, then at least Halo fans across the board would know that there's more stuff coming and more to expect immediately rather than just feeling like we're walking into another age-long section of not knowing what's coming up in the future with Halo Infinite. Actually, alongside the announcement stuff that we saw at E3, 343 posted a blog post which seemingly had way more information than anything we actually got to see in the E3 conference. For instance, we got some really cool info posted in the blog, like Big Team Battle now having 24 players, that there would be a training mode that lets you practice against bots along with a shooting range, and that bots could be used and added to custom games to fill empty spots. There'd be things like customizable vehicles, and they announced that it won't have loot boxes or any element of chance when you do decide to purchase a customization, along with the fact that any purchase that you can make won't affect gameplay and would be strictly cosmetic, and they even alluded to flights coming out later this summer. All of these little announcements are incredibly exciting, and the fact that 343's blog posts communicates a lot of these great ideas leads to more good faith that we could have gotten during the E3 event. I almost wish they would have just given an extra two minutes or something where someone just read off the blog post and said, hey, there's some multiplayer reveal event happening the next day in case you didn't know and you wanted to maybe tune in for that. That might be something you're interested in, considering I feel like a lot of people tuned into E3 just for Halo Infinite. So when it comes down to questioning whether or not the Halo fanbase should be worried about Halo Infinite right now, Luke and I would probably have to argue that you don't have any reason to be more worried than you already were, but I also don't think anything shown off at E3 should be the catalyst for the fear that the Halo end times are upon us. Just because the specific Microsoft-led presentation didn't really live up to the hype, it doesn't mean that Halo Infinite won't or can't live up to the hype either. It is just frustrating after this long drought of having absolutely nothing Halo Infinite related that this is all we got. Yeah, it can feel a little bit like a downer, though hopefully this is the breaking of the silence that will maybe have 343 continue to communicate more with what we can expect from Halo Infinite, and maybe with this multiplayer event that's coming up, we'll see something or anything. It's really weird they didn't promote this during the actual event. Okay, now just real quick, since we've gotten the main criticisms out of the way, there were some things that we did really want to acknowledge because we were kind of really excited about those looking back after we saw the initial presentation. Like seeing Master Chief floating through space and you can see his armor with all the little dings and scuffs on it. We really liked that. From what we've seen of the grappling hook, it does look like it could be integrated really well. This whole dynamic with Master Chief and this AI thing looks like it's going to dive into a character perspective of the Master Chief in maybe a deeper way than what we've seen from Halo in a long time, but without necessarily jeopardizing Master Chief's own personality and what makes him a character, which is something that we would think would be really awesome to see a closer in-depth look of. And on multiplayer, a lot of the skins and armor that we could see in the actual gameplay looked really great. We really liked the way that the BR and some of the other guns just looked when they were in action in the short snippets that we did see. Sure, there was some armor abilities or features that did look a little bit questionable, like this little shield thing that deflects the bullets back, which apparently from the blog post is a one-time type use item, like a bubble shield would be from Halo 3, so it's not something that's going to be likely heavily abused. And then there were some other things like ordnance drops that we're kind of unsure of. That one gun that looks like a spear launcher or whatever that just wrecks that warthog was awesome. Though the gravity hammer, not really too much of a fan of. It reminded me more of the Halo 4 and 5 era gravity hammer when I really just like the brute power of the Halo 3 and Halo Reach gravity hammer better. Choppers were back, which we're really excited about, and the banished aesthetic looks really great. Though I do have to say, not really a fan of the banished Banshee. Super nitpicky, I know. It just kind of looks like more of a mega block aesthetic. Though, gotta give Luke credit, he absolutely loved the way that that Banshee looked, so to each their own. So yeah, despite us getting just four minutes of Halo stuff, there are things to be excited about. It just seems like a really, really 
odd presentation overall, but I don't think anything from the presentation should be vindictive over how Halo Infinite could be when this game finally releases. That's going to be up to 343 and what they do over the next following months and how they showcase everything and how they convey what we can expect from Halo Infinite over the next following months as well. But I don't know, maybe we're on our own, maybe we're the only ones who are just lost with the Halo Infinite E3 reveal or showcase, but let us know what your thoughts were in the comment section down below. We did have a lot of fun watching this and streaming it over on our Twitch channel, so if you guys aren't following us on Twitch, do check us out. There's a link in the description down below. But otherwise, make sure you're subscribed to notifications on if we just showed up and you're recommended, so you can continue to follow us all the way through Halo Infinite's release, and then through the years after that, because it'll be a journey. But otherwise, we'll see you guys next time with a new video.